and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you so dearly for always supporting us. I really do appreciate. If this is the first time you are coming across this wonderful family, or you are seeing my face for the first time, I still remain Agatha Progress, bringing it to you back to back. Remember, we react to our videos and our opinion is highly needed. So just sit back and watch this video, and I will be right back. That's a clash. So, what did IPOP do? That you promptly declared them a terrorist group in 2017, I think about August. IPOP is known to be clamoring for one thing self determination. Self determination is a right recognized by the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights of 1948, it is recognized by the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. It is recognized by the European Convention of Human Rights. It is recognized by the American Intergovernmental Convention of Human Rights. Excuse me. <coughs> it is recognized by the Indigenous People's Rights <coughs> Instrument. It is recognized by this, the civilized world that where a people feel they are suffocating under a particular system, like the Nigerian system, which they call federalism, which is actually unitary, they have a right to seek for self-determination. Whoever knew the USSR, the former Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, would break up into smithereens, into above 15 independent nations. Eritrea and Ethiopia used to be one country. Today, they are two sovereign countries. Sudan and Southern Sudan used to be one country. Today, they are separate countries. India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh used to be one country. Today, they are separate countries. So, you cannot say a people cannot seek for self-determination if the system, <clears throat> or that with their presently being held together, being coupled together forcibly, is no longer working, or is now asphyxiating, or is hemorrhaging, or is suffocating, they can seek for self determination. That is all that IPOP have been saying. I was saying, and we all see IPOP. We see them moving on the streets, blowing whistle, wearing berets, singing, dancing with clubs. How does that make them a terrorist group? The military high command in 2017 first quickly came out before the formal prescription to the office of the attorney general under section 2 of the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011 that IPOM was hereby banned. And what were the offenses according to the military high command? You can, tell, you can Google it by yourself. Say they were carrying clubs, they were throwing pebbles and stones and that they seized a rifle from a female military officer and two rifles from other military officers. That was why they declared them terrorist group. But Boko Haram, that has been ravaging Nigeria, killing Nigerians in their homes, on the streets, in the markets, in churches, in mosques, bombing. You have not declared them terrorist group specifically. Boko Haram, that is occupying swaths of land in the northern part of Nigeria, particularly in the northeast, controlling many local government areas, with the governor crying out. Controlling many local government areas in Niger State with the governor crying out Boko Haram that now give passes, set up their own government, and impose taxes on the indigents that they must pay tax and they must pay certain tithes and certain dues and with a pass before they can pass, before they can go somewhere. You haven't seen such a group that is challenging your sovereignty and your suzerainty, challenging your legitimacy. As a terrorist group, that is double speak by this government, and it is this kind of double speak, this kind of self contradiction, that the insecurity is still festering and ravaging. You you need to do things holistically, using the same rule, not rule of law for some people, and the rule of the thumb for others. It cannot work. A group is challenging your legitimacy. Making your state look like a failed state. And one of the greatest indices of a failed state, apart from grinding poverty, which we're already in, being the poverty capital of the world, having overtaken India, apart from corruption, monumental corruption, which we're already in, being rated by Transparency International, under the Transparency Anti Corruption Perception Index, in 2022, as it won number 149 out of 180 countries in the world most corrupt and the second most corrupt country in west africa 
Those ones are already there as indices of a failed or failing state. But one of the greatest indices of a failed state is when non-state actors like Boko Haram, like armed bandits, like kidnappers, begin to challenge the supremacy of legitimate government, dictating the pace in terms of violence, inflation of violence, in terms of control of instruments, of coercion, of violence. That is a failed state. You don't need any other definition. Of it. And that is going on in Nigeria, where, where Boko Haram and Ambanis will attack the very institution of defense, the Nigerian Defense Academy, and take away some officers, killing one of them. Where Boko Haram, kidnappers, we kidnap some students in Kaduna, Kaduna State, and then dictate to the government and the parents of these children to buy them bags of rice, bags of gari, bags of beans, to buy them tomatoes, tarodo, tatashi, vegetable oil, palm oil, even dictating the quantity that will be bought that must be bought for them so that they can feed their children who are under captivity for the purpose of extracting ransom from the parents. That is a fake state. You don't need any definition or other definition for it. So the president. After the Attorney General did his work gazetting these two groups as, as um, terrorist groups, had done well. But he has not done very well. He fell far short of going the whole hog. Declared Boko Haram, mentioning specifically, you are hereby declared a terrorist group. The Yeti Allah, you that have been owning up to killings, to attacks on innocent villagers, owning up to sending people, you are hereby declared a terrorist group. These are more terrorists inclined than IPOP that were blowing whistles. And marching on the streets, carry club dancing. We we want Biafra. We want Biafra. That was that was what you categorize as terrorism. And then you now put away their leader, <coughs> the leader of IPO, Mazi Nabikano. He was even captured in Kenya and forcibly brought to Nigeria. It's in detention. <coughs> when Nigerians, this government particularly, I need to drum it to the ears of this government. Because with all respect, this government appears dumb, and it appears numb, and it appears deaf, and it appears blind. Let me drive it home. When an idea, when the time of an idea has come, you can't stop it. Adakaburo was killed for an idea. That did not stop the agitation in the Niger Delta. Kensaru Wewa was murdered, judicial murder, for an idea. That did not stop the crisis in the Niger Delta. Igbo is kept away, at least somewhere in the Republic of Benin. That has not stopped the Yorubas in their agitation for self determination. The, the Igbos that want self determination, which has been spearheaded by IPO, which I've already shown is a non violent organization, and the man is kept in prison, even with him being in prison, the people obey his orders and his instructions. If he said, Don't go to the market, all the markets in the Southeast are shut down. If you say you may now go, they all go. No government can give those directives and they are, they, are, they are obeyed. It shows that that young man in detention is not compelling or forcing the people. Rather, the people are merely galvanized for an idea that they believe in. If they do not believe and they say sit at home, all of them will say go to hell. They, in fact, they, for that reason alone, they will say since they have told us to sit at home, it is today we will all now go out. Anybody knows that the average Igbo man is independent minded. And he's very he's highly republican but you cannot force things on him or her but for them to follow that man in incarceration that shows that it is an idea that is fighting for that they believe in trying to say that we are not that dot in the large cycle as seen by mr president so my honest advice to mr president and his advisors or advisors is to say seek a political solution to this nam the canoe matter I agree with the president in his interview when he said he cannot interfere with the judicial process. I do agree. He should not be seen to interfere with the judicial process. I score him very highly there. But then, we also know that there are political solutions to issues that are festering, that are not going away. You cannot treat a serious ailment like leprosy with medicine meant for eczema. So you must have to square up to it. Have we not seen cases? 
where an attorney general under section 174 of the constitution enter a nolly prosecute by saying this crime should no longer be prosecuted release the person let him go and see no more that is a political solution that does not mean that the president would have, would have interfered with the judicial process because the right person to do it the attorney general of the federation under sections 150 and 174 of the constitution has done his own job after taking instructions from mr president it is not by mr president going to the court to tell the judge justice bin and say hello has solved this matter don't try no so he is right to say cannot be seen to interfere with the judicial process i score him very highly then but mr president sir you can do it politically by instructing the attorney general of the federation who is also your minister of justice to say enter a nolly prosecute we want this matter settled this agitation should go away these are my children the Igbo people are part and parcel of this country they are not a dot in the cycle they are not the three over nine over 90 over 95 percent voters whether they voted for you or not the important thing is that you won your elections the day you won your elections you became president of the federal republic of nigeria no president of some aspects against some aspects or minus some aspects or excluded some aspects that is where mr president is missing it so he must see nigeria as one whole unit and aggregate not as perforated he must see nigeria as that dolly patterns coat of many colors Linguistic, linguistically different religiously different ethnically different but with all having a, com a common purpose which was why some people blamed or some people did not think Amadou Bello did well when he said in 1942 during the debate in the answer that Nigeria was a piece of historical mistake. I went in this book written in 1948 also saw Nigeria as a piece of geographical expression that there are no Nigerians in the true sense that there are Irish people or the Scottish people or the English people. He was right. That was why when Zeke, during the independence agitation, told Amadou Bello, the Sadana of Sakoto, who later became the premier of Northern Region, why Zeke became premier of Eastern Region. He said, Zeke told Amadou Bello, we should forget our differences. Amadou Bello gave him the right answer. He said, no. Namdi Zeke away. We should not forget our differences. We should recognize our differences. That you are an Igbo man and a Christian. That I'm a Fulani and a Muslim. But that these are differences, have we recognized them? We should now decide to walk towards the same goal. He's called the Bo's eye. Are we doing that today? Is the presidency promoting that unity, that unism that we ought to see when 97 percent or more of the entire security apparatchet? Of the country is made up of one section of the country, one religion, those making you prebendalistic, chronistic, sectionalistic, using favoritism and rule and divide tactics. Can't Mr. President see that the country is bleeding, is hemorrhaging, and that we are actually following, ironically and unfortunately, the social theory of cloud arche and other eggheads like him. The Nigeria is operating a disarticulate economy where we produce what we do not consume and consume what we do not produce. Can Mr. President see that? Didn't Mr. President and others, the leaders, the leading lights of APC, were they not on the streets in January 2012 in operation close down Nigeria in Abuja and Lagos and in Badana Noshobo over removal of oil subsidy? Because they said the Jonathan government was lying, that there was nothing like subsidy on oil. And in any case, if there was a subsidy, it was only benefiting the few. But that they should not remove it. They demonstrated. Jonathan had increased the foil price to, a, I think, about 100 naira. And then that forced him to bring it to 97 from about 88 naira per litre. This government has already increased the price of oil on about two occasions. Today, it's about 165 naira. They are still threatening. They are now calling the final removal of subsidy. And I asked the question, which subsidy? The one you said was not there in January 2012? So we have to be interrogative. 
We must challenge authority. We must speak truth to authority. We must challenge impunity. We have to ask APC and Mr. President, you promise us that the Naira will change at one Naira to one dollar when you become president. You make it at between 170 and 180 Naira per the dollar. Today in the black market, the Naira is 558 and 559 Naira. I'm still counting to the dollar. In the government official rate, is over 400. You met it at about 180 maximum. You told us that you will lead from the front as a retired military general and that you will crush Boko Haram within three months of your coming to power. Six and a half years later, more, I'm still counting. Boko Haram is waxing stronger and stronger. So you failed on that in this. Then you told us we will wipe out corruption. But today, corruption is trotting about like a proud peacock. Where under Jonathan, Yaradwa, and Obasanjo, corruption was democratized, allowing the sip down syndrome, allowing everybody to see it and chop. Today, corruption has been privatized. It is in the pockets of less than 0.5% of the 213 .9 million Nigerians by the United Nations projection. Again, in that area, Mr. President has failed, and his government has failed. Then you told us the third chapter that promise. You will straighten Nigeria's economy and we have one of the best economies in the world. Mr. President, sir, in 2015, you made the Nigerian economy rebased by the World Bank and the IMF at over $500 billion. Nigeria overtook South Africa to the, and made South Africa to become second. Nigeria became the seventh fastest growing economy in the world. Mr. President, sir, today, Nigeria is number 149 out of 180 most corrupt countries in the world, as observed by Transparency International in their Anti-Corruption Perception Index. And Nigeria is the second most corrupt country in West Africa. Again, Mr. President, sir, with all respect, you have again failed in that area. So, sir, what do we do? You still have approximately one and a half years to do some magic, some magic, some miracle. Great presidents are known in times of difficulties. Harry Truman, David Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Abraham Lincoln, the man who on the 19th of November 1893, 1863, at his Gettysburg Declaration in Delaware, defined democracy as government of the people by the people and for the people. Winston Churchill is remembered today for his role during the Second World War. So it becomes immortal, imperishable in the hands, in the, in the hearts of the Britons. Martin Luther King Jr., a young man, took up the challenge where Rosa Park stopped. Rosa Park had been told to vacate her seat for some white people at Montgomery in Alabama, the United States of America. All the seats reserved for whites had been occupied. The only few ones remaining at the back, near the toilet, were for the blacks. And some whites came and said, vacate your seat. She said, no, I'm too tired. I will not be able, I will not do so. They dragged her up, threw her out, and that started the civil rights movement that, that swept across America. And Martin Luther King Jr. took it off from there. He walked. So there is a saying that where was the park sat, Martin Luther King Jr. walked so that Obama could, could run. Obama has run so that our children can fly. So great leaders are not given to damage assessment or lamentations. When Obama ascended America's presidency in January 2009, he did not go into the books of lamentation as to what, how President Bush Jr. had taken America virtually into recession. Everybody knew it. But he just started, focus with his eye on the ball. Started Obamacare. The Republicans were even fighting him not to succeed. But the Democrats were fully with him. There was no lacrima effusion. There was no tears, tearing, tearing up. He squared up to the job. Because he asked for the job. Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump. Before he was sworn in January 2021. He had already assembled virtually the entire cabinet. So he hit the ground running. 
But we saw this government, which was never prepared for governors. They were rather prepared for the bamboo being soaked in his blood. For violence, that is the major participant. Then God touched the heart of that great African Democrat. President, Dr. Good luck, Ebele Jonathan. Who? Why is the post we're still being counted in Kano? Call President Buhari, their candidate. Buhari, say, Mr. President, sir. Congratulations. The president could not believe it. God bless President Buhari because on three occasions, at least I've watched him say it, that Jonathan shocked him and surprised him. That what he did, not many people in the world can ever do that. So, congratulate Mr. President. The power you wanted, could you get it in 2003? You failed in 2007. You cried in 2011 after leave, saying that you will never cap in again. But somehow, there was a coalition of forces, different political parties, coupled together to drive away the PDP from power. And you won. Because they were not prepared for governance. That was why six months later, it took up to six months before they could assemble a mere cabinet of ministers, with many of them non-performing ministers. So, Mr. President, sir, when the going gets tough, only the tough gets going. Trying times are what bring out the best in leaders, quality leaders. Don't lament over the past. No, sir. History beckons on you to put your name into the pantheon of heroes that govern Nigeria. Apart from Obasanjo, you are the only Nigerian who has had the rare privilege of being put a military head of state as the civilian president. To whom much is given, sir? Much is expected. So Nigerians look up to you to re remove the present grinding poverty, abject penury, the crimson red blood flowing on the streets and in our farms, to remove the state of neither, neither, if we have found themselves, the melancholy, the gnashing of teeth, the tears, sorrows, and blood, finally, and over power. Whether you can do it or not, time shall tell. But it is in your own interest sir, to do something so that you remain on the good side of history. So that when Nigerians remember you, they will remember you with kind feelings. Not with hatred, not with spite, not with regrets as to why they brought you in under serious populism. Remember, sir, Mr. President, one young man trekked from Lagos to Abuja to celebrate your victory. Remember, sir, another young man rode a bicycle from Kaduna to Abuja to celebrate your victory. Remember, sir, that there was euphoria across the country. Sir, so take a drive. Deliberately, under camouflage, incognito, around the cities of Abuja or any other city in Nigeria, pretend you are not Mr. President. I see that Nigerians are like the walking corpses or the living dead, envisaged by Ayi Kwe Ama in his epic, The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born. Do something about it, sir, so that. We will not still fall into that category also envisaged by Ayiko Yama. The same Ayiko Yama. The Chichi Dodo bird. The Chichi Dodo bird is human excrement. With all his heart. With all his soul. But you know it's, it's food sack. When a person is defecating in the forest, the bird perches by to watch the human physics decay. And then maggots start wriggling out of those physics. The food of the bear that his human physics is actually maggots that we go out of human physics in other words you cannot say you you hate beans with all your heart and soul and your best food is akara and momoi such is contradictory you cannot play hamlet without the prince of denmark you cannot argue that six is different from half a dozen Sir, the time is short. History beckons on you. Don't attempt to play Romeo 
without you yet. The people are your constituency. They elected you into office. And under section 14 of the constitution, say power belongs to the people through whom people in government derive their authority to act. So this power belongs to the people. Exercise it, sir, in their favor. Not to do so is to argue that you who did not know that the judiciary in Nigeria is a scam. They are all scammers. I am telling you, what they did to His Excellency Mazina Dikanu is against his fundamental human rights. And these people, they know this. But they are trying to use one charges or the other to cover up anything. What they did, bringing him from Kenya, is a crime against his fundamental human rights, of which they know this. So I see no reason why the atrocity in Nigeria can't be well deliberate on, even in the courts. They are all scammers. You see one thing, that seat, nobody will stay there forever. Remember, Muhammad Obawari is about to pack his load again and move out. That is when you will know that <laughs> nobody will sit on that particular seat forever. And come February 16th, that is this month on 16th, the Zentelessi Mazina the Kanu will appear in court again. And we are praying for God's mercy. We are praying for God's grace to do the needful, to do the rest for us because we can't do it just by ourselves. All right, my mother family, that brings us to the end of this wonderful update. I still remain your one and only Agatha Progress, bringing you all the way back to back. If you know you have enjoyed this family, you have a subscribe and you have been enjoying all this, please do where to subscribe, like this video and share our videos. See you when I see you. For me to you, I say bye.